morning, everybody, and happy Friday. I am delighted to be here with you today. Um, I have just a few announcements. Uh, we'll wait just a couple minutes while we get everybody situated and ready to, and everyone's gonna hop on on this lovely Friday. I don't know what's, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what's going on in your neck of the woods. But we have started spring. I, um, I'm kind of shocked. Usually our spring doesn't happen until later in March, but we are, uh, we are here early a little bit. So, um, so that's exciting. I am going to go ahead and do my announcement because so many times I get on this call and it's like I talk for half an hour before I ever, <laughs> before I ever introduce the call. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Welcome, my name is Margie Rivers Davis and I am the creator of the Fast and Easy Way to QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor Certification. And um, you are here inside, if you are watching this live, then you know what we are all about. But for those of you who are watching the recording on YouTube, this is our weekly live stream, which we do every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time on Fridays. Uh, it's only available to those of you who are a member of the QBO Gym Locker Room. This is our free Facebook group that um, <clears throat> is, and it looks a little bit different. Of course, if you're on live, then you know all about the Facebook group. But for those of you watching the recording on YouTube, link is down below. We'd love to have you. Of course, it's absolutely free. And inside the uh, locker room, <clears throat> we are your spot for hands-on practice using QuickBooks Online. That's all we do, hands-on, hands-on, hands-on. It's all about uh, hands-on practice in QuickBooks Online. As a member of the locker room, you get our free Getting Started course, which teaches you how to um, how to get your free QuickBooks Online accountant account, how to access the sample company, which is where we do all of our practicing and exercises. You're gonna learn um, some terminology um, about uh, you know making sure you understand the difference between an invoice and a bill. Um, and then, uh, so that's all in the Getting Started course. And then in the locker room, we have over 100 free exercises. So uh, people are always asking me, oh, I joined, but where do I get my free exercises? So here I am inside the locker room. <clears throat> and good morning, I'm seeing a ton of people hopping on saying good morning, good morning, howdy. So delighted to have you here, <clears throat> here on, Oh, I keep forgetting that I can do that. All right, so here I am inside the Facebook group and there is a featured section, okay? So you can get to it using this tab here or you have like a tile that looks like this. Um, and in the featured section, it says, welcome to the locker room. And this inside here is where you're gonna find the link to your 100 free exercises, okay? So um, you get free, free exercises, you're gonna get a free exercise of the week, that's if you attend our live stream, which is this right now. Um, as I mentioned, we have these live streams um, every week, Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern, um, and you're gonna get that exercise of the week so that you can follow along. All right, so that is us, that's who we are, that's what we do. And um, good morning, good morning. I'm seeing a ton of uh, people hop on. <laughs> Free is good. <clears throat> Free is good, yes it is. All right, so um, I just have a, uh, a couple of announcements. First of all, um, I am thrilled. Um, I'm just so delighted that so many people love us here at Fast and Easy QBO and, um, and applied for our recently posted open position uh, for our student support specialist. And um, uh, we made the decision very, very quickly. And so we already have somebody and I would like to welcome to the team, Anthony Morris, who is on the chat with us today. 
Um, you guys, if you guys have been in the locker room for any time at all, you know what a positive force, positive energy that he has. He loves Fast and Easy QBO. He's always help, quick to help people uh, find the answers that they need. And he was doing it without even being on staff. So when he said, hey, I would love to do this, you know, for you and get paid for it, we said, hop on it, you know, so so we are delighted to have him. Thank you so much for all of those who, uh, who applied for the position. We are a fast growing company, so there will always be, um, there will always be more uh, positions. We're posting another position coming up in that maybe today, uh, maybe next week we have another position coming up. We're always growing, we're always expanding, and uh, we love to bring you on along. We love to bring on the people in our community. One of the things we love um, about Anthony is that he's already been through our courses and so he already knows there's like a huge learning curve like we didn't have to, I, I'm not having to teach him who we are he already knows who we are and what we offer it's just teaching him like the technicalities behind the scenes so um, so so grateful about that um, Patrick you thought you were gonna announce that I got a new wig no, I did not. This is that first one that I got a few weeks ago. It is, it is, it's not doing well, guys. It's not doing well. I would go back to my, my pixie cut underneath. In fact, I'm seeing all my ads. You know, I see my own ads on Facebook. You know, like I'm in my target market. <laughs> you probably see my face everywhere. And I was like, oh, I really miss that little pixie buzz cut. It's a pain to maintain, as you know. Like, that's why I got the wig in the first place. But um so yeah so right now my real hair is is like too long to do the pixie and so uh so but i think the next time you see me i'm gonna go back to the pixie i don't know like uh yeah because this is just i mean i told you guys when i got it that it like it's so cheap and it's just i don't know it's kind of embarrassing even to wear it right now but it's better than the alternative so <laughs> so anyway all right, so that was one big announcement. The other announcement <clears throat> is that um, we are approaching recertification season. And um, at the beginning of the year, people always ask me, well, at the end of the year, you know, people think that their certifications are based on a calendar year. And so in December and January, I start to get a lot of questions about recertification. Then it dies down. And then now, uh, as recertification season approaches, we uh, start to get a lot of questions um, about it again. <clears throat> so I'm going to be talking about recertification every week probably from now until, until the end of June because it is uh, it is recertification season. I, um, I created a blog post the other day. I posted it in the group. I don't know, Joel, if you can grab that or Anthony, if somebody can grab that and put it in the chat so that, so that you guys have it. I should have thought to include that. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I think maybe I put it in the newsletter too that went out this morning. Anyway, um, hopefully answering all of your questions about recertification. So uh, in a nutshell, recertification is based on season. It is the season that you got your certification and season runs from November 1st through October 31st, okay? So October 31st of 2023, that's a cutoff. If you got your certification before that, on or before October 31st of 2023, you will have to recertify by June of this year, June 30th. If you got your certification after November 1st, <clears throat> then um, you will not have to recertify until spring of next year, 2025, okay? I know you're gonna have all these more specific, well, what if, well, what if, well, what if I got basic and what if I got advanced and, and all this stuff? So I'm gonna direct you to that uh, blog post and, um, yeah, so Joel just put it in the chat uh, about the, so I'm gonna direct you there and uh, so you can read like all of the different iterations. Wow, that is a long link. What the heck happened there? <laughs> oh, because Anthony po posted the one, the Facebook link. 
Whew, that's a big long link. <laughs> anyway, so that was uh, a so that was one announcement. I'm gonna be talking about that every week because just people have questions all the time. And then the last announcement before we dive into our exercise today is uh, about year two of the gym. So as a reminder, um, the let me just hop over to my uh to my desktop again so we have the uh so inside the, the facebook group we have as i mentioned over 100 free exercises these exercises are feature based okay so they uh you learn a particular feature how to do this how to do that and uh they're just one-off individual i'm learning this feature this is the exercise okay the QBO Gym is our subscription product. So uh, the, the QBO Gym is our subscription product and um, it gives you exercises that are scenario based. So uh, inside the gym, we have this whole like workout, you know, kind of theme going on because they're exercises. You get a, an entire year's worth of uh, experience being a bookkeeper. And you, uh, it is as if you are, uh, it's scenario based, it's experiential. So it is as if you are being the bookkeeper for a particular business, Craig's uh, Landscaping, which is our sample company. So in the gym, uh, it's broken up by month. So, cause you, when you're working on books, you typically, you know, work for a particular uh, month. You're gonna have a set of exercises that are for when you very first log in to um, Craig's books. You're gonna sit down, you're gonna do all the money in, money out, you're gonna process the bank feeds. Then you're going to do all of the things that Craig has asked you to do. So Craig might ask you to send out an invoice or pay a bill or send out a reminder for somebody, okay? Or uh, maybe he went to the bank and so he asks you to record the deposit, okay? That's the cardio section. And then we have the strength training section, which is always going to be a deeper dive into a particular feature. So it's a feature, but it's in based in a scenario. So you're always going to have a little uh, video. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. It's always going to start with a little video telling you about what's happening. Was considering installing an outdoor background for. The so you can hear just a little bit about what's happening in the business, and then you have to do the exercises that uh, follow up with that. So the, uh, you're gonna have to create an invoice, you're gonna have to convert that estimate, uh, or you're sorry, you're gonna have to create an estimate, you're gonna have to convert the estimate to a purchase order. Uh, <laughs> Patrick says, if only we could get Craig to pay us for the work we do. Yes, that is true, that is true. <laughs> So um, the uh, so anyway so we're gonna do the uh, the work we're gonna you're gonna have like a little pre-assessment that just touches base with you how much do you know already and then you're gonna have the step-by-step -step exercises to actually do those things okay so that is the gym and then um, all of the work that you do in the gym feeds into our proprietary skills verification system called Booksmatch. Booksmatch, uh, there's, I, and I'm not gonna demo it today because it's in, in we're in the middle of a, a big redesign, which I maybe I should have given you uh, a, um, let, me, let me take the off the screen share. Um, I should have given you an update on the redesign of that. The, we have approved the final design. Woohoo! This is so exciting. That means they're actually starting to program it. Woohoo! Um, and the programmer said that he thinks it'll be another week before, uh, before you see it implemented. So super excited. Wouldn't it be awesome if by this time next week, I know I've been saying I've been saying that for weeks. Oh, this time next week you'll have you'll be well, you know, you'll it'll be you'll be able to see it. Um and um but I hopefully for real this time it will. I didn't realize I talked to the developer actually on the phone yesterday and um and I said, you know, like it this should be pretty quick because it's cosmetic changes, you know, it's just like we're already collecting the data. It's just a matter of like how it's displayed on the screen. 
And he said, um, yes, it's cosmetic, but it is, um, uh, he said it's difficult cosmetic, like it's tricky, <laughs> it's tricky to do. So anyway, so that's what the hold up on that is. But anyway, so your skills are verified and you'll be able to show off to the world in your books match, um, in your books match dashboard that you have verified that you can actually do these skills. And then uh, we are gonna show you off to the world and we're gonna show you off and say, hey, look at these amazing bookkeepers that they've done. All right, so that's, let me go back to, um, to, uh, the, to the gym, okay? So that is um, the gym. Now, when you are a member of the gym, you have access to once you have earned uh and by the way for those of you who don't know all of this is gamified so as i uh do the exercises um i get i click the thing and it goes ka -ching, and i get points and at various points you get like a little woohoo like all of this stuff and um and so all of that is transferred over to books match and then um uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, so, oh, so when you earn 250 points in the gym, then it unlocks a, uh, a separate course, which is called the exercise of the week. The purpose of the ex exercise of the week is to keep your Booksmatch account active. Now, if you are just starting out in the gym and you are just working along in the gym, then you can just work in the gym and that will keep your books match active. And by active, do I mean, um, uh, by active, I mean uh, in books match, we keep track of how frequently you, uh, you are upskilling, okay? And our recruiters specifically said that we want, um, they specifically said that we, uh, want um, to see that they are actively working in there because we we said, I'm going to get this screen share off because I'm so tiny. Like sometimes I give these long soap boxes and okay. So we, one particular re recruiter said, I waste so much time reaching out to people who I find out that that they don't, that they already got a job. They don't have time to take on, you know, my project or whatever. She said, it's a huge waste of time and it's very frustrating. She's like, I want to know that the people in there are actually working and like, I want to be able to reach out to the people who are recent. So that's why we have the exercise of the week. If you're just working through the gym regularly, like that's fine. You just do that. Really? The exercise of the week is for people who have finished everything. They finished everything. And now if they're not still in there, it looks bad. And so we want to give them something that they can do to make sure that it continues to keep their, uh, their exercises uh, or to keep their ac account active. That's why we have the exercise of the week. But then we can also, you know, do it here on the call today. Um, somebody asked a question, um, are all the exercises starting from, oh, are, uh, that, well, it's hard. Are all the questions starting from March don't have videos? Let me, let me tell you what that means, what you, what that person means by that. And by the way, the reason it says Facebook user, see it says Facebook user, it's because this person did, didn't give Ecamm permission. So uh, in your email, and uh, Joel has also posted it in the chat, maybe you could post it again. I am doing this live stream through a software called Ecamm, and um, Ecamm requires permission from Facebook to share your name with me. So I would love to know who you are. Um, the, um, yeah. All right, so the, uh, what this is, let me tell you what this person is asking. What this person is asking uh, about the exercising, or exercises having videos. Let me go to this, okay? So if I go to uh, warm ups, for example, and I go to one of the exercises, so here's the first, okay? This exercise has a video associated with it, okay? So you can follow along for the video walkthrough. 
um, to, uh, and we have uh, somebody on staff, her name's Jen, and she records the, she records all of the individual exercises that we have. She records them and puts them on Facebook. So that's what this is. Not, the answer to the question is, not all of the exercises have videos associated with them, okay? So the, she is, she works really hard. <laughs> She's actually this week, I don't, I can't remember when she gets back, but she went to Ireland, guys. So uh, everybody needs a little vacation and I'm a little jealous that she went to Ireland for her vacation, but she'll be back and uh, soon if she's not back already, I can't remember. It was around now. I can't remember what the actual dates were, but um, she'll get back to recording the exercises. So um, anyway, so many of the exercises uh, have them. The 100 free exercises, I think almost all of them have uh, extra have videos in the gym. Uh, she's still working. She's still working on them. Okay. So that was the answer to that question. Uh, and then, so somebody said, can you still ask a question? I think that's if you don't give ecam permission. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can ask a question. I just don't know who you are when you ask the question. And I like to, I like to know who you are and I like to, uh, answer, uh, you know, I like to be able to talk to you. Okay, um, so that was, let's see, going back through the chat. That was the thing. Okay, so that was about uh, the videos. So here is another question. Does the gym tell you if you did the exercises right? Um, so there's two, uh, there's two things. One is if you are in year one of the gym, year one of the gym, that's what I showed you here the, um, what we're looking at here, choose your workout. Okay. So this is year one and, um, the, in the exercise, where to go. Okay. In the exercise, there is a screenshot for every single step. We're going to do the exercise of the week in just a minute. And as soon as I'm done talking, <laughs> cause I always do this, I talk too long. Um, we're going to do the exercise of the week and you're going to see how the screenshots line up with exactly what we're doing. So you will, as you're doing the year one exercises, you will follow along with the screenshots and you will see exactly that you're doing it correctly, okay? Year two is different. And that was actually the next thing that I was gonna talk about real quick is year two. Year two is different. I'm not gonna demo it right now because we're running out of time, but um, uh, year two is different. It's more challenging and it does not give you the step-by-steps. So let me show you again. Okay, here I am on, this is a year one exercise and it's step-by-step. -step. Click this, then click that, then click this, and it has all of the screenshots. Year two doesn't have that. Year two just says, go create a sales receipt. And it doesn't tell you each step-by-step. -step. And so because it doesn't tell you step-by-step, then there is a check your work spot. And so it, it'll check uh, every so often along the way to make sure that you're doing it correctly. So, so yes, the answer to your question, yes, in two different ways. Uh, oh, somebody says there are a few questions before each section. You can check them if their answer is correct. Let me show you that real quick. So you, I did the quiz and I submitted it and then it gave me the answers here. So what kind of purchase will you use to record Haley's purchase? And then here's the answer that I was saying. I'm sorry that wasn't on screen guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, all right. So that is, that is, oh, and what the last thing that I was just gonna say about year two. So year two is more challenging. It doesn't have the step-by-step. -step. It has like the check your work instead. Uh, but then the other thing that year two has is it has uh, a Craig chat. So instead of, so Craig is our business owner and in year two, you actually get to uh, have conversations with Craig about like, you get, you ask him for documents, he'll send you documents, you ask him, you know, what you, he, what you need to work on next, he'll tell you, that kind of thing. Um, 
the March issue, the March, uh, Suzanne says, Lush, she loves Craigbot. Awesome. Um, the March issue of uh, year two is behind. Obviously, it's March 8th and it's not out yet. And the reason it's behind is because we're having problems with Craigbot. So um, the Craigbot as we're realizing is, um, is going to have to be redesigned. So the, the programmer who is in charge of that is working on books match. <laughs> He's working on books match to get that fixed. And that's our highest priority. Cause we really want to be able to, we really want to be able to show you guys off and, uh, and we have to have good, a good dashboard metrics to be able to do that. So that's his first priority. Once he's done with that, then he's gonna help us fix Craigbot. So we're gonna release the March issue of Craigbot, and, or the March issue of year two of the gym, and it's just not gonna be as uh, comprehensive as we would like it to be. It's gonna be a little bit more stilted, um, and it will probably be that way for April also. But when we get into May, um, we'll have a more, we think we'll have a more robust uh, way to communicate with Craig. And, and then we'll backfill it, of course, for the previous months, for those of you who aren't there yet. So this is, I'm really just talking to the people who are that far in advance, okay? All right, so shall we get to do some exercise? Shall we do some actual hands-on exercises, which is the whole point of this live stream? I think we should, I think we should. All right, so the, the last couple of weeks, we have been, uh, so we the last couple of weeks, we've been doing some very basic, we've gone back to basics, done some very basic hands-on exercises. Today, we're gonna start to get a just slightly more advanced. Um, Intuit actually refers to this as intermediate. I don't know how they decide that, but okay. Um, and, um, and we're going to go, uh, a little bit, um, just a little bit deeper into, into, into actually customizing things. So inside your, if you are, uh, Joel has just, ch uh, Joel has just posted this in the chat for those of you who are not in the gym or don't, uh, qualify yet for the exercise of the week. Um, he has just posted that we're going to be customizing sales forms. For those of you who are in the gym and have your 250 points, so you have this unlocked, then uh, it is in there. Remember that if if that's you, if you are in the gym, you only get books match credit by doing it here. You can't use the link that uh, that Joel just put in the chat. You have to do it from here in order to get the credit. Okay. All right. So you're going to click this. And then we are going to open it up and here is our exercise. Um, this is, um, I actually forgot that. Okay, I'm gonna, see I do this sometimes, I just edit it right on the screen, on the live stream. <laughs> I forgot to move this. Our team member who, uh, uh, I, I didn't tell the, the team member to put this later in the exercise. Uh, so I'm gonna say, let's see how to do that. And this like, here's what you need to know stuff um, should go down here. Here's what you need to do. All right, all right. So this particular exercise and um, all of the exercises for the first half of the year, so we're about halfway through the first half of the year, are uh, we are working through the Pro Advisor challenges which Intuit provides inside your QBOA account, okay? If you don't know what your QBOA account, that's your QuickBooks Online accountant account. If you don't know how to get your free account, then link link is below. If you're watching this on the um, if you're watching this on the um, the 
replay. If you're watching this on YouTube, links below. If you're watching this live, you should have know all of this information. Um, Patrick says, are we going to get paint on our feet during this exercise? You may, you may indeed get paint on our feet. That's a joke from our, uh, my post in the Facebook group earlier today. <laughs> so, um, so the pro advisor challenges, as I mentioned, these come from Intuit and you can find them inside your QBOA account. This is my QuickBooks Online accountant account. I know that I'm in a QuickBooks Online accountant account because it says accountant up here on the top. Um, also, this bar is gray. It will be black if it is uh, if you're in a client account, and also because it says your practice up here at the top. Okay, so that's how I know I'm in an accountant account. So in my accountant account, and I go to um, sorry, it's up at the top, Pro Advisor, and I go to Training. Then I'm going to go to the Training Library. Is this big enough for you guys? I feel like this is smaller than it usually is. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go to the training library and then uh, they have these different product, actually I'm gonna make this smaller again so you can see. Um, they have different product train products that they offer training on and um, QuickBooks Online is typically open but if you close this you can see that there are uh, these four uh, products that they have training on, and then they have also training that is not uh, specifically product related, okay? So for the product training, we're gonna be inside QuickBooks Online, and then they, all right, let me make it bigger, bigger again. All right, so then they have these different tiles, which are the modules where the training is. So let's take a look at our exercise again. Okay, and here we have where to find this exercise, okay? So this particular exercise, we've already clicked on training, training library, um, we're in the QuickBooks Online section. Now we're gonna click on the sales and customer tile. Okay, sales and customers tile. Um, as I mentioned, this is an intermediate skill. So uh, the training is divided just like with the courses, they have kind of these little uh, groupings. So if I click that, it'll close it up. So we've got beginner, intermediate, and advanced skills. And so this one is an, is an intermediate skill, okay? And here are here is all of the training that is for those intermediate level skills, okay? And the one we're gonna be working on is customizing sales forms, which is, um, this, oops, wrong one. This one right here, customizing sales forms. Okay, so now when you're in here, you can see that there is a Pro Advisor Challenge. Sometimes you can click on this and it'll take you. Otherwise, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but this one it does. So it's, this is our Pro Advisor Challenge. Let me make this bigger again. What happened? There we go. Okay. So here are the instructions, um, and this is telling you how to get to uh, the sample company. Here's uh, the task, so this is what we call our scenario. Um, and then it just tells you what it should look like at the end. And then um, it tells you how to get there. Uh, but like there's no individual step-by-step. -step. What does it tell you to do if you're having trouble? Nothing, doesn't give you any options. All right, so that is, uh, so that's the original exercise. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our exercise, which, you know, maybe we're biased, but we feel like it's a little bit easier to follow along, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to uh, complete this in the sample company. Okay, the sample company, again, if you're not familiar, links below if you're on YouTube. Um, but this, we get to the sample company by clicking the gear icon and hitting sample company. You will be logged out of your QBOA account, so don't do that while you're taking the test. 
we teach you how to access the sample company while you're taking the test in our courses. So if you want help with that, we can definitely do that. Let's see. Uh, okay. Um, Billy, I'm going to answer your question here after we do the exercise. Okay, don't let me forget. All right, so now I'm in the sample company and um, and I can, we have this nifty tool because I am, I think it's because I have Scribe loaded as a Chrome extension. So all of these exercises are built using a tool called Scribe. Uh, or they are scribehow.com and they have a Chrome extension. And because I have the Chrome extension, I have this little button that says guide me. And that allows me to pull up the exercise side by side with the, um, with the sample company. I don't know why it's saying that that is not there because it clearly is, but that's okay. We're just gonna, I'm gonna make this a little bigger so that you can see the exercise. Okay. When you watch Jen's videos, she already has this set up. So, okay. All right, so we're gonna follow along. Okay, so here again is the exercise. <clears throat> Here's our scenario. Your client, Craig, asked you to help him customize the invoice he sends to his customers, okay? So that's what we're gonna talk about today is customizing invoices. So here is, we've already talked about how to get there. We went, we loaded the sample company, <clears throat> okay? So now let's get started with the exercise. Here's what you need to do. We're gonna create a new invoice style. We're gonna change the font of the invoice to courier. We're gonna change the invoice color to orange, and then we're gonna save the customized form, okay? One thing that can be confusing is um, that is this term form. <laughs> I know when I first started, I was like, what the heck? So a form, so when they, when they talk about a sales form, they're referring to um, a, a a transaction that goes to a customer, okay? So in our case, we there are three, there are three of these. One of them is the invoice, which is what we're gonna do. An invoice goes out to a customer. The second one is the sales receipt, okay? So the sales receipt is just a receipt of the sale. Invoice is requesting money. Sales receipt is just giving you receipt that you paid money. And then the third one is an estimate, okay? So an estimate, and they can all be branded based on your, uh, your own colors. And so that's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> um, so um, somebody says, uh, somebody says, so should the exercise be done from our QBOA account or from the link provided by Joel above if you're not a member of the gym? Okay, so the your QBOA account is where you need to be uh, uh, doing, that's how you access the sample company. That's how you're going to be doing the exercise, okay? So you're gonna use the link that Joel sent for the instructions. That's what I'm showing here on the right. Those are the instructions. That's the link that Joel sent. And then the sample company is where is inside your QBOA account, and that's what you're actually going to be doing uh, doing it, uh, in the, in the exercise together. Um, Kurt says maybe next week we can do an exercise from year two. I don't know about that, Kurt, because it's pretty advanced. And I, uh, I mean, I do some advanced stuff, but I don't know how, I, I don't want to alienate people that, um, I don't want to alienate people that are not as advanced by doing a year two exercise in the live stream. We could potentially have like two sections of the live stream, maybe have like, okay, here's like the basic version and then we do it again in the advanced version. Potentially, I'll think about that. But I don't wanna dedicate the entire live stream to an exercise that's gonna to be too far above people's heads. All right. Um, all right, so here I am, so I'm inside. Again, I don't know why I got this error message, but um, the, I'm gonna go to the 
gear icon. That's what it's saying, the gear icon. This is where we change, um, uh, this is where we can edit the custom form styles. So under your custom, uh, under the your company column, click custom form styles. So right here. Okay. And then here what we have is this is the default style. And this is what we are editing. Now, I want to, before we even go into this, how about we take a look at what it looks like now? Why would we change it? <laughs> Why would we want to change it until we know exactly what we are, what we're doing? Okay. So let's, you don't have to do this with me. You could just watch or you could do it, whatever. Let's create an invoice and see what it looks like. Okay. So we're just going to create an invoice for Amy's Bird Sanctuary. <clears throat> we're just going to add this billable time that's already there. And um, let's click print or preview. And then print or preview again. Okay, so I'm gonna make this bigger so you guys can see it better. All right, so this is what the email, this is what the, the invoice currently looks like. Okay, currently it has the name and address. It has an email address, doesn't have a phone number. It says invoice. It's got who it's to. It's got this stuff here. It's in blue. It's in a particular font. That's the end of it. Okay. All right. So that's what an invoice currently looks like. All right. So let's now, I'm going to go back to our exercise. We're going to click new style. Now, Remember how I said there's three things that we can edit. We can edit the invoice, the sales receipt, and the estimate. Here is uh, these. Or we could edit the default style so that it's the same for all of them. Maybe you want different styles for different emails um, or uh, different styles for different transactions. Right now, we're just doing the exercise that Intuit provided. This is Intuit's exercise, okay? So they want us to create a new style for invoices. So we're gonna click Invoice, okay? And here is the what we just saw, okay? Let me go back to, where are we? Are you? Okay, all right. So remember when I just now, I created an invoice and I did the print preview and I showed you what uh, it looks like, okay? So this is kind of our canvas right now. This is what it looks like. This is what they're gonna see. When they click the link to view the invoice, this is what the customer sees. In this exercise, they want us to change the color. So here we go. Who was that asking about their, uh, getting their feet getting dirty? Patrick, okay. <laughs> Here we are, we're gonna splash on some color. Make sure that you have something to protect your feet from the paint, okay. <laughs> and let's see, click on orange. Let's see what our exercise. Note that when you click orange, the preview on the right updates to reflect this change, okay? So we're selecting orange and boom, okay? Now, there isn't, I will tell you that it is, um, uh, it is limited how much we can change this. Uh, and we're gonna, when we're done with this particular exercise, we're actually gonna play around with all of these settings. So you can see um, there, but there is limited um, things you can change. I heard a rumor, I heard a rumor that, um, that Intuit is possibly, potentially, going to create a new interface for us for uh, building invoices. So we'll see, we'll see when or if that's gonna happen. But for right now, this is the tool we have, okay? So the next thing that they want us to do is, uh, so we're on, that That was step six. Again, this is Intuit's exercise. Um, Step seven, we're gonna change the font type and we're gonna select get choosy with your font. 
get choosy with your font, okay? And click on the down arrow to expand the drop down, then click career. So here, right here, we're changing it from right now, it's at Helvetica, we're changing it to courier, and boom, notice how it changed, okay? Notice when you click on courier, the preview on the right side updates to reflect the change, okay? And for the exercise, that's all that we have done. That's all that we've done. So we click done and boom. Why isn't it there? Uh, that's interesting. Did I forget to save it? Do I need to refresh the screen? You guys that are following along, did you get it listed? Okay, there it is. All right. And probably it would have been a good idea for me to change the name of that, but they didn't tell me to do that in the exercise. So I didn't do that. Okay. Save and exit without saving. All right. So here are, here's my form style and in their exercise, that's all there is. That's all there is to it. Okay. So let's take a deeper dive now at some of the stuff that they kind of glossed over. <clears throat> so I'm going to go, well, first of all, let's create an invoice with this new template and see what happens. So I'm going to click plus new. I'm going to click invoice. We're going to do the same thing we just did. We're going to say, Amy bird sanctuary. And this time we're going to do, cause we, the, we don't have the drawer there anymore. We're going to just create a rock fountain and I'm going to hit print or preview. Let's see if it comes up as orange. No, it does not. There is a trick to this and I cannot remember what it is. Let's see, save and send. Nope. Well, gosh, guys, what happened? Update layout. Let's see, update layout. Oh, oh my gosh, you guys are the first to see this. Oh my gosh, you guys are the first to see this. Brand new, right here on the Fast and Easy QBO live stream. This is brand new, guys. We knew this was coming. I should have mentioned this. We knew this was coming. Let me go back to that. Let me just show you what I just did, okay? Oh, I'm going to go back to old layout, switch layout. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so exciting that this just happened on the live stream, that this just happened on the live stream. Yes, Suzanne, new invoice design. So this, okay, guys, just, I don't want you to get confused. This has nothing to do with the invoice style that we just did using the exercise of the week, that pro advisor challenge. Okay. This has nothing to do with that. Uh, Intuit has for months now, months now, they long, I mean, months and months and months ago, they unveiled, they uh, unveiled a new invoice interface. Okay. So this new invoice, so when you create a new invoice, um, the, uh, it looks different and they rolled this out. They rolled it out to new, uh, customers first, brand new customers first. Then they rolled it out inside my, if I were to send an invoice inside my, per, my own accountant account, then I would have the new interface because they eventually rolled it over to, and it has been, uh, the accounting people hate it because they hate the new interface because it doesn't have some of the functionality that the old one does, even though it looks pretty. And, um, and so they've had this toggle back and forth. Um, it's, if so you can go back to the old one 
Sometimes you switch and you cannot go back to the old one. And so accountants, like the accounting people are like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I lost all this functionality. I can't go back. And they, uh, but then they announced recently that they were going to permanently switch everybody over coming soon. And I don't remember what the date was that they're permanently switching over. All this time, you have not heard anything from me about it because it hasn't been in the sample company. And every, all of our exercises are in the sample company. And so I was like, well, until it's in the sample company, my students, my community, they don't need to know about it. And today is the day, ladies and gentlemen, today is the day where we now can look at the new interface. This is un totally unrelated. This is totally unrelated to making our interface or, or making our, our invoice orange, which we just did. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is our old style invoice. This is the classic layout of the invoice. We have the customer up at the top. We have the email address. We have um, the address, which is associated with the customer terms, which is how long this customer has to pay. Um, the invoice date when we're sending it out, this will, the due date will automatically be calculated based on the terms. We have tags. We have the invoice number, which is automatically generated, but we could change it if we wanted to. <clears throat> we have our grid here, which allows me to select um, products and services that we are charging the customer for, and we're sending out this invoice, okay? We have uh, information we can put on the invoice, information we can put on the statement. My head's in the way, but we have, well, let me get my, okay, we've got attachments we can add. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we have the subtotal, we have any discounts that might be applied, we have sales tax that might be applied, and then the balance, okay? And then we have our um, options here to save and send, to save and share a link, save and close, create a new one. We have customize, which we can do right from the invoice, but don't do it, guys, because this will take you outside of the invoice, it won't save the invoice that you're working on. This is confusing. We could re make it recurring or what we did uh, just now to like look at it was we did this print or preview, okay? Or you can create a packing slip, okay? All right, let's take a look at the new layout. So I'm gonna click update layout. It's gonna say yes, update layout, any changes. So if I had put in a customer name, and look at this. It didn't do it when I did it a minute ago. So what does this say? Invoicing just got a whole lot easier. We've added a ton, so it's got it's more intuitive. You've got more ways to get paid. You've got more time-saving tools. Um, Autofill invoices, schedule reminders. We could already always do that. We could always accept all these payments. Uh, we could always preview what the customer sees. I don't know. You guys can do this on your own and do the tour. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go to the invoice. Okay, so here it is. Here is our invoice. Notice it's still blue. Uh, so I don't know why the orange thing didn't take. Um, you can add a logo. Now, this is when we, my goal, my, my purpose for today was to do a deep dive. We were gonna roll up our sleeves and de take a deep dive into the, um, uh, into that customize uh, thing. Um, and one of the things that you can do is you can add an, a, lo a logo, and I was going to show that to you. But, um, and I was also going to mention, and I'll just mention it right now because I don't know if we'll have time to come back to it. Did I close it out, guys? Oh my gosh. I think I closed out my, I had this open. Ah, oh, I closed it out. The, uh, the in the gym, I think it was the September issue, maybe November, sometime in the fall, we had an entire issue dedicated to customizations. And so I was gonna point that out to you, but I accidentally closed it and we got distracted with this new exciting thing. So um, anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so I was gonna point that out. We have an issue of the gym that's entirely dedicated to all things customization. 
not just the invoice, but also customizing your desktop, like your, your layout on your main page. Uh, we go into bank rules and I can't remember what else, but it's all like that strength training is all about customizations in that one issue. Um, so looks like we can add a logo directly on here if we want to, okay. And um, this is my information, so Craig's design, but it looks like I can edit the company. My guess is if I click this, well, let's see what happens. I'm gonna click it. Aha, interesting. I fully expected that this would open up account and settings, but it didn't. Interesting, okay. All right, so I don't really like this. I don't like that the email address is right here. I would rather have the email address down here, but we'll see if we can do that. All right, here is where we're gonna select the customer. So we're gonna select Amy's Bird Sanctuary, same as always. My guess is I can add a new cus customer in the same way that I could before. Let's see what happens if I edit customer. Edits that record, that's new, couldn't do that before. Um, so uh, it assigned the invoice number like it usually does and you can change it if you want to. This is all the same as before, it just looks better. Um, here are the tags. Now the reason it says hidden right here is because the customers don't see the tags. So you can add a tag. Tags is a whole nother lesson, guys. Like a whole nother day we'll spend together on tags. Um, but that's, it. in the classic view, it doesn't say hidden. I just wanna let you know why it says that. And then you could click here to go to manage tags, which is, that was there before. Okay, so now we have the products and services that we're adding. So let's add my rock fountain. Okay, and it looks the same. Um, the previous one, I had a service date column, which isn't there. Um, I have settings that will allow me to uh, make it billable or to uh, track it to a particular customer. I don't have that. I don't know if that's a setting in accountant settings or whether it is um, just not available on the new format. Um, I don't know. Add product or service. Interest, ooh, and we can add a subtotal. Oh, look at that, that's fancy. But we never had that before. So let's do this, we'll add some, another thing, lighting, add a product, that just adds a new, um, and it adds a new uh, row. Okay, interesting, all right. Then we have our customer payment options, um, which this is related to QuickBooks Payments, which is, again, a whole nother lesson. Um, he says, when I hit review and send, the colors and design changed back to the old style. Interesting. Uh, Suzanne says, new invoice design looks so different, but I think I'm gonna like it. Yes, it does look more like an actual invoice, I agree. It is easier to use. It, one of the complaints that people have about all of this new design stuff that they're adding to QuickBooks Online is that it's so big. Uh, and so that is kind of like a, it is nice. It's nice to, to work around in, but like I can't see the whole invoice here. Um, what if I just make my, yeah. So it's not, it's, it's kind of hard to do that. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see, so edit customer payment options. So this was at the top before and now it's at the bottom. What happens if I click edit? What's this, customization? You are using an old template. Settings changed here will not apply to the invoice your customer sees switch template. Let's do it, let's see what happens. Switch template, nothing, it just closes it. So I don't know what that's about. I guess this allows me to put new things on. Edit default settings. 
So that, that one took me to account and settings. I don't know about this guy though, because it's not, Let's see what happens if I turn on ship to, did that change something up here? Oh yeah, change that. Okay, so I can say what I want. Oh, the service date field, that's why it wasn't there before. Okay, so that was on my old one. Now, here's an interest, interesting thing about custom fields. For a long time, the, um, the custom fields uh, has not been working in the sample company and it's been very frustrating to me because I can't like create exercises for you to show you how to use custom fields. We had to have all these crazy workarounds and um, so maybe this is, um, maybe this is gonna fix that. Jennifer says, I like the payer view at the top. Yep, we'll get there. Click switch template and then scroll down. Okay, switch template. Oh, this one down here. Oh, other templates. Oh, look, here I can select the invoice, the one that I just created. But it doesn't change it on here. Maybe it'll get, when I get to the payer view, we'll do that in just a second. Okay, so how did I even get this little thing up the top? I don't remember. Edit payment options. That's what I clicked here. Oh, so here are, how could I open up this thing on the right hand side without clicking this one? So I clicked edit there, that's one way. Nothing else. Oh, manage right here. Aha, this guy allows me to manage all of these different things. Okay, so payment options design this is related this right here is related to the template that we just built together okay awesome automation what is that <clears throat> if we want it to be a recurring invoice or a recurring reminder again that's a more advanced topic we'll talk about that in a future in a, in a future live stream we'll talk about recurring and all of this and reminders and the difference between scheduled unscheduled and reminder we'll We'll do all of that, okay. And then, ooh, customer reports, what's this? Oh, interesting. I think this is gonna open a different window. Nope. Okay, so I guess I could, see, I don't know what the purpose of that is. If I use the black save button, maybe I would want, I don't know why I would wanna to go to the customer support, customer report right on there. Let's see, all transactions, nope. I don't know why it doesn't just open it in a new window, but okay. So let's see, we're back in here. See the math, this is all related to sales tax. Discount, we put in the discount here, interesting. Who knows, who can tell me, this is a quiz question guys, who can tell me what's supposed to happen once I put in a discount amount? Can anyone tell me? No, no, not discount, sorry, not discount, sorry. I was I was trying to test you on deposits, not discounts. Sorry, brain fart. Okay, so CMAT, that's all related to this. This is related to the sales tax. What's it gonna open? This is pretty much the old style. Okay, edit totals. Why would I, why would I edit the totals? Oh, see, here's the deposit. It says new, but yeah. Apply discount after sales tax. Wait, let me go, how do I close this? Close this and go edit totals. And then how am I, how is this editing totals? That doesn't make any sense to me. Hmm, okay. All right, so then here I can change my note to the customer internal notes, memo and statement. So some of this is new, internal notes, that's new. Um, attachments though, that's pretty much the same. Okay, no, we don't wanna exit that, we just wanna exit this. Okay, now, so this is 
this is the invoice, this is what we see. Now let's see the email view. Oh, you're using an old template to preview your, e the email your customer sees, click review and send, or go to design, or why can't I look at pay or view? All right, let's see, PDF view, am I gonna get the same message? Okay, pay or view. So this is what the, uh, this is what the client sees, but then they, the client has this little button and when they click this button, they can, uh, that's when they view the email that we designed. So, wow. So that's, so let's see somebody else. Jennifer was mentioning about the pay or view at the top so I can see what they see. Yeah. Oh, I can't tell you. Being able to see what they see is so valuable. We have the ability to see where you are inside your courses. And I do it. It's so, it's so great for me to be able to, like for when we do customer support, to be able to see exactly what you're seeing. Like it's just life changing. Which is why last week or the week before, I encouraged you to do send us support requests using Loom because then we can see what you're seeing um, anyway. All right, well, this is awesome, guys. Let's see what my choices are here. So black, I used to be able to just have, when it was the black save button, I just would have save, that's all. But here I can save and close or save and new. This button, let's see what my choices are. Oh, interesting. Print and download print packing slip or share link. So that's kind of interesting how they kind of swapped those. Let's see what review and send does for me. Aha, there is my orange ugly invoice. Who was it that said, who said that? Kurt, when I click review and send the colors and design change back to the old style, you mean the one that we set up? So this is the ugly orange thing that we set up interesting well that was fascinating i'm glad you guys got to go on that journey with me <laughs> as we figured this out for the first time we will of course build some exercises uh around actually doing that okay let's go to uh i do want to come i do want to go back to looking at uh the, all of the different pieces of the custom design though, because I don't know, I, I don't know what this, how this is going to affect like the new, um, the new invoice layout that we just looked at. I don't know how that's gonna affect, but I did wanna spend, and we're already over time, but I did wanna spend um, just a few minutes talking about the other things in this customization that are, um, that are were not covered in that pro advisor exercise okay so um in when you go into the edit let me just go back because i did it kind of fast okay uh exit without saving okay so remember how in the exercise we went to the gear icon and then we went to the not chart accounts custom form styles okay that's how we got right here okay and this right here is the template that we created together Okay, in the exercise. So I'm going to edit this, okay? And this is where we, we did uh, add a splash of color, we changed the font, but I wanted to point out a couple of other things here, okay? When you are customizing the invoice, you have these three uh, buckets, three categories of things that you can change. So the first is the design itself, and you actually have options there are all of these different, uh, all of these different templates, so which you may not even know existed. So you have the Airy Classic uh, here, which is the normal, but then I could turn it into this friendly, <clears throat> this friendly one that looks different, or this bold one. Okay, so we have those choices. As I mentioned, you can add a logo um, in the. In the, in the exercise in the gym, so I mentioned that we have a whole month of the gym that's fully, like that whole strength training is dedicated to all sorts of customizations. 
and uh, you actually get to practice doing that. So we give you a logo for Craig and you actually get to practice uploading it and seeing it how it works on things. Um, here are different colors, different fonts, and then you can uh, print it out. So this is all the de design stuff so you can see kind of how it looks. But look, you also can control the content, okay? When you are doing the content, the content is divided into these different, uh, these three sections. So we have the one at the top. So if I click the one at the top, um, here's Craig Design and Landscaping. I can choose whether I want, remember I said the email address is on there, but the phone number's not. So I could add, choose what I wanted to show up on there. Um, I could add my address, I could add my website, okay? This is automatically pulling in from what I have in account and settings. If I change it here, I'm pretty sure I do not change it in account and settings. Um, it's, they're not linked, I'm pretty sure. I would test it, but we don't have time, okay? Um, and then, so here's other things. So right now, uh, it's called, uh, do I want it to include the form name? It's right now it says invoice. I could say invoice for you. And then that's what it would show up at the top. So we can control all of that. Um, you can control whether you want it to be, uh, have the terms show, the due dates, and then if you had any custom fields. Now, this is interesting uh, because this, these words right here, custom fields, that's new. And that makes me think that they are fixing the custom fields in the sample company. I'm like, that would be amazing if they did that. That would be amazing. Okay, so um, so anyway, so that is the top one. Then we have the middle section, which is the, um, the actual thing that we're charging them for. And notice that you can include, say what you want to include. You can actually move them around. Okay, or I can say, oh, I don't want the description at all, or I want the description and I want it to include the, the quantity and rate. Um, and then notice how activity is really, really big, and this is kind of squished. So you can actually edit that, and also they're both called activity. So you can actually edit that right here. So um, we could change this first one to say item, right? And then we could uh, make that smaller. See how that's adjusting? And then activity, we could call that, change that to say description, okay? So I just wanna, so that's hide that. So that's, all of this stuff is kind of hidden. So that's why I wanted to spend a day going over it with you show more activity items so you can have all of these other things that you can choose to show. Then you have this last section. Have you ever wondered how to change these words? Thank you for your business and have a great day. Here it is, right here. <laughs> so you can do that, you can add footer text. Um, I had a client who in the footer of all of her invoices had her, uh, like her ACH information, her bank account number and routing number so people could pay, uh, so that they had that to be able to pay. So um, so all of this good stuff. <clears throat> so those that is the, um, the content section. And then this is the emails section. And this is important. This is important for those of you who are taking the test uh, because you need to know this about this full details versus summarized details. And this is where you have the invoice attached as a PDF, or if that's not a PDF attached, then they would just click the link and then that's how they would get there. And then I'll bet you didn't know this, but you could, when you send an email or when you send an invoice, um, a, uh, an email goes out with it and you control what that says. So if you ever wondered, how do I control what that says? <laughs> Here's your answer. It's right in here. 
There we go. It's right in there. And so you can change it. You can change it so it doesn't say Craig's Design and Landscaping Services, but it says Craig or, you know, whatever it, you know, whatever you want to, uh, to put there. So lots and lots of customizations. I totally forgot, I forgot to give this to Joel, that now that we are on the, um, now that uh, we are uh, giving marketing prompts along with our exercise of the week, we are giving those away for free in the live stream as well. What do I mean by that? Let me switch back over to our exercise of the week. So we did the exercise of the week. We did uh, a deep dive, like a deep dive into the new layout of the invoice. Surprise, surprise, I wasn't even expecting that. And then we took a deeper dive into the th customization things that were not actually in the exercise, okay? And as part of the gym, we give you uh, a way to talk about what you just learned, okay? Um, and the reason we do this is people, we, I just kept hearing over and over that, um, I just kept hearing over and over that uh, people are knowing, like I know that I need to market myself, but I don't know what to say, okay? I don't know what to say. And so the so I decided to now include with the gym and with the exercise of the week, a marketing prompt so that you can talk about what you just learned, okay? So here is the marketing prompt for today. You learned about customizing invoices. Here's a sample post. Dear business owner, do your invoices in QuickBooks Online look just like everyone else? else's? Say it ain't so. It is so easy to stand out from the crowd and make everything look like the brand you've worked so hard to build. Contact me, oh, typo there. Contact me today and I will show you how, okay? If somebody who has access to the exercise of the week could post that in the chat, because Joel had to leave, and I, I can read the chat, but I can't post in it. So um, if somebody has, somebody is in, has access to the exercise of the week um, and wants this, and if somebody, if we could put it in the chat, that would be great. If I don't have anybody, email support at fastandeasyqbo.com if you are on this call and you want this and don't have access to it because um, I want you to, I want to make sure you have it. So, um, so you just learned how to customize invoices so you now can promote yourself and you can say, hey, I know how to, you know, I can help you customize this thing. Um, I have a couple of questions that I've missed. Uh, let me take off the screen share. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, clicks. Okay. If you change the design, Andrew says, if you change the design to modern, you will be able to view the email view. Okay. All right. Well, we can play with that another time. Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Let's see. Uh, do you know if there's a way to show the outstanding balance? Oh, yes. Yes. Did I close that already? This was, I'm so glad you brought that up because this was one of the things that I, when I first started to, I was like, how do I do, there's gotta be a way to do that. And yes, there absolutely is. And the way that you do that is, it's in content, in the content se section up at the top. And you want to say, oh, da, 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 da. oh maybe it's not, maybe it's the middle one. Here it is, account summary. So it's the middle one and you want it to show the account summary. The account summary shows your transaction history for a customer's account. It includes balance forward, payments and credits, new charges, and total amount due. So when you click this, show on invoice, it shows that little extra thing. Why is that not a default? That's what I wanna know. Like, it seems to me like that that should be, everybody should have that. Um, so yeah, so I finally, like it took me a very long time to find it, that's how you do it. Okay, thank you to whoever asked that question. Okay, let's see. Uh, a few weeks ago, I kept getting the old template notice, so I tried over and over to make a new one, 
but it kept saying it was old, not sure what they were trying to get us to do. I don't know either. Uh, Rosalba says, using content deposit to see, see outstanding balance. Oh, I think that's just, I think you, she was trying to answer the previous question, which is, um, yeah, it's content, it's the middle section, and then it's account summary. That's how you get the outstanding balance. Let's see. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, oh, thank you, Billy. Okay, thank you. Billy's got the bonus, the prompt posted in the chat. Thank you so much, Billy. Okay, um, oh my gosh, we're so over time. Uh, all right, so somebody, okay, thank you for Ecamm, all right. Where was I? I was answering questions. We were talking about the marketing prompts. Okay, last thing about the marketing prompts. The reason that we have the marketing prompts is because people were saying, I know I'm supposed to market myself. I know I'm supposed to post on social media every day, and um, but I don't know what to say. And that's why we have the marketing prompts for um, uh, when you do uh, the gym exercises and the exercise of the week has the marketing prompt associated with it so you know what to say. And I wanted to share with you, well, I'll share with you really quick because I really want to go over this every single week because it's so important. And that is the three, two, one. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm going to share this, but then I'm going to share like a fun tip that I got from Corey. I think it was just yesterday. I told her, I was like, I'm going to share that on the live stream. So, um, so three, two, one. Okay. We have permission. This is a marketing methodology, which is, uh, uh, we're allowed to share it. It's courtesy of boldhouse.com. And, um, they, so this is their, uh, oh yes. Thank you, Billy. Um, this is their methodology, which I have adapted for our purposes because I just think it's so brilliant, okay? So if you want to get clients, you have to tell people that you're in business. Like that's really what it is. You have to tell people <laughs> that you're in business, okay? Um, and so um, here is how you're gonna do that, okay? So the first thing that you're gonna do is three times per day, three times per day, you're going to reach out to a person, okay? You're gonna reach out to a person. This is not posting a, a flyer in your apartment lobby. This is not sending an email to everyone you know. This is not posting something on your Facebook page or LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever, okay? This is reaching out to three individual people, okay? You can do it by email, text, uh, DM, phone call, however. And you're all you're gonna do, the only purpose of that is you're gonna say, I am a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. If you're not a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor, by the way, pass that certification test, get that badge, and be able to say that you're a Pro Advisor, okay. So you're gonna say, I am a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Who do you know that I could connect with? That's it. You're not trying to sell them your services. All you're saying is, I'm a QuickBooks, you're raising your hand saying, hey, I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Basically, do you know any small business owners that use QuickBooks Online? I would love to connect with them. That's all you're doing. You're connecting with them, okay? The goal is from that activity to have two clients, to, to be able to talk to two people every week or connect with connect with two people every week who are potential clients, okay? So these three people up here, they are not necessarily, in fact, they are probably not potential clients, okay? But of that activity, of the 15, because you're gonna talk to 15 people a week, and of the 15, hopefully you're gonna connect with two potential clients, actual potential clients in a week, okay? And that's just, a small business owner that uses QuickBooks Online, okay? So all you're gonna do is you're gonna introduce yourself to them and say, hey, so-and-so introduced us or whatever. Hey, thanks for connecting. I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Just want to let you know that I exist. That's all you're doing. You're not trying to sell them on anything. You are just letting them know that you exist, okay? And you wanna stay connected with them. 
So LinkedIn is often the platform of choice depending on where you are, but you are gonna connect with them on LinkedIn and then you wanna make sure that everyone, like the whole goal guys, the, the, the analogy that I've been using is how many realtors do you know, right? The reason that you know realtors is because the realtors um, tell you who they are. The realtors do not stop talking about the fact that they are realtors. The same is true for you. You need to always talk about the fact that you are a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. I am a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. And you're gonna just keep saying that. So you're going to connect with them on LinkedIn. You're gonna make sure that your byline says that you are a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Actually, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it better. Oh my gosh, we're going over so much today. All right, I'm trying to get this so you can see it. How, how about that? How about that? Oh my gosh, okay. I don't think that's any better. All right, but we're so over time, but I, this is so important, okay? So you're gonna make sure that your byline says you're a pro advisor. And then you're gonna post tips every couple of days just to keep remind, just so that you are constantly in people's, um, I, in people's consciousness that you are a pro advisor so that when they need help, then they know to reach out to you, okay? So what I have here, and I'm sorry it's so small, next week I'm gonna try and get it, I'm gonna try and do, I gotta do this every week, guys, because this is so important, it's so important. I have so many people who don't have clients or wondering how to get clients, whatever. This is how, this is how you tell people that you're in business. <laughs> So then you're also gonna like and comment on other people's posts. In general, the whole idea is to keep your waving your flag so that people know that you are the person to turn to when they need help, okay? You're not, your job is not to convince anybody to hire you. Your job is to be there when they're ready to hire you, okay? Um, and then uh, the goal of this, so you're going to connect with two people a week, you're going to do all, just keep your flag flying with the goal of having one diagnostic review every month. Okay, so every month you want to do, I mean, this is your minimum goal. You want to be able to, and you're going to land that diagnostic review because you've already built up this relationship with people and you're going to say, hey, I'm a QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor. Thanks for liking my stuff. Um, and, um, would you, uh, would you like me to take a look at your books and see how you're doing? That's it. That's it. And maybe you could, and I have, I have it on the, oh man, can't see it on this. Okay. So maybe I added for those of you who are in the cleanup course and learning how to do a diagnostic review, if you're close enough with this person, you might say, Hey, I just finished this course and I learned how to do a diagnostic review. I'm looking for people to practice. Would you, you know, let me do it? And so then you're gonna say, um, doing that. Okay, last thing, last thing, and then I'm gonna get to Billy and Suzanne's questions. Okay, uh, last thing. When I was talking to Corey yesterday, or the day before, um, she found out that she can uh, or she's gonna ask about teaching classes at the local library. And she said, I'm gonna teach these classes. I'm gonna teach, you know, it's an hour of my time a week and um, I, I, you can't charge anything. When you're at the library, you can't charge anything. You're just saying, hey, I'm, if anybody wants to learn how to do QuickBooks Online, I am, you know, I'm, I'll teach you how to use QuickBooks Online and then, and then what she said was, and then when they find that they can't do it themselves, they will know who to talk to. They have already developed a relationship. So that's another thing that you can do is you can teach classes and it doesn't have to be short. And guess what? You just learned all about customizing invoices. So you can say, hey, I'm gonna teach a class. If you had a connection, if you had connections with a bunch of people who owned businesses, 
and you could reach out to them and say, hey, I'm gonna do a class. Maybe it's gonna be in person. Maybe it's gonna be online. Zoom class is gonna be real quick. I'm just gonna show you how to customize your invoices and all of the different options. And, um, and that's it. If you need my help, if you, wanna, uh, if you want some assistance, I'm available. Um, and you, know, you de are developing that connection. So I thought that was a brilliant idea. All right, Billy um asked about let's see wait hold on uh jesse thank you also for posting the marketing prompt for everybody okay so billy asked this is going back to book smash billy asked um why his speed is showing up as shining star when it was a rock star before and uh suzanne asked same question is my status now shining star since I finished the available content and not showing an increase in my skills? I think this is the importance of doing the exercise of the week. Bingo. Yes. So, um, so the speed. Now, first of all, I would tell you, don't worry about it right now. <laughs> worry about it after we get the new Booksmatch dashboard in place. Once we have the new Booksmatch dashboard in place, if things aren't looking the way you expect them to work or you don't understand what a me metric is or whatever, then ask us because we, we want to make sure that it's absolutely correct and showing the right thing. Um, so the so for right now, don't worry about it. But I will tell you about speed. Speed is measured or it will be speed is measured by how uh, how many exercises you do in a week compared to how many exercises somebody else does in a week okay so if you're um if you are completely finished with year one of the gym and well and february year two is out now too if you're completely finished with everything then your speed is naturally going to go down and you're naturally going to have that and so we have so so don't worry about if your knowledge is high it doesn't matter that your speed is low okay we have in the new uh in the new um uh dashboard the new design there's going to be like an indicator that will be a green yellow or red that says or orange i think red's a little harsh but <laughs> it's green yellow or orange that says um the uh the green so it will say that this is a top talent this is a uh a rising talent so a top talent means that your knowledge is high and your consistency is high and it doesn't matter about this your speed could be low and your you know your speed could be red and as long as the other two are high you'll be a top talent if your speed is high and your knowledge is low, which is going to happen if you're brand new. If you're brand new, you we don't want you to um, we don't want you to be um, not what is the word discounted if you're just because you're new. So if you're new, then the speed being high is important, and your knowledge is less important. If you've been around for a long time, your knowledge is important and your speed is less important. And so we have that all that metrics and all of that stuff figured out in the gym. So don't worry about it. And the whole shining star, rock star terminology is going away. So don't worry about that. Okay. Um, so let's see. Uh, that was those questions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Patrick said, you know, after you do that little class, you can get reviews on your to post on your pro advisor listing. Yes, actually, act, yes. So yeah, the the more reviews you have on your listing, the higher you're going to rank. And uh, so yeah, absolutely have them do that and have them do that. By the way, in the class, okay. Don't say, don't send them a card and say, oh, by the way, when you get home, if you could review this class, no. <laughs> say as part of the class if you could everyone could just pull up this link and if you enjoyed today's class just give me a quick thumbs up you know star or whatever that would really help me out a lot <laughs> so um so yes yeah, so you can ask for a referral the um the the um 
rules for your library might be um, might be tricky. So it might not be the library. It could be like a you know if you want to do a Zoom call or something like that, then you could do it. Um, okay, and let's see. So that after teaching the course of the library about the referral. Yep. Okay. Oh my gosh, guys, it's 1236. It's 1236. And I was sure that this was going to be a quick call and we were going to end early. I can't believe, should I just schedule this for an hour and a half every week and not even try to make it until noon? Oh my gosh. All right. You guys have a fantastic rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday for Mindset Monday, um, which is still not scheduled. It's just whenever I show up and do it. And, um, and, uh, and that's it. You guys have a great week. I can't wait to hear your success story.